Peace, peace. What's going on? This is Yane. Uh, so, through my journey of this new level of healing, which I've never really experienced to the capacity that I'm experiencing it now, um, and I think everybody I speak to just about has saw 2020 as being the hardest but yet best year of their life, where so many things opened up, so many new things opened up, so many new beginnings happened. And along with the new beginnings, there were also some hard endings. A lot of people dealt with breakups. A lot of people dealt with relationships ending. I myself went through an incredible journey, um, still on it, of healing, of evolution, of looking at myself, seeing myself, dealing with my inner child, healing my inner child, look, dealing, doing shadow work, like all of this came within June of, uh, so from June 2020, after a really bad breakup, you know what I'm saying? Um, and we'll probably talk a little bit more about that soon. Um, but I just noticed that this was a lot of people who dealt with breakups. It was just something that, just like with most relationships that you really invest your heart, your soul, your spirit in, um, when they end, there's a huge impact on you. There's a huge impact on you emotionally, physically, spiritually. And oftentimes we underestimate it because breakups are just part of life and we're like, oh, well, that's just that's just what happens. But it still doesn't mean that the process is not something that can be completely traumatizing if you don't move through it in the most effective and healthy way, right? Many times we don't do that. You know, we find other ways to deal with the grief, other ways to deal with the, you know, the whole situation. I wanted to share with you all four things that I needed to do in my process that really helped me heal myself to be love, not just to get love, not to receive love, not to love someone else, but to be love, to love from a soulful place, right? These four things I had to do, because if I didn't do these four things, I don't know where I'd be. I'd probably be still holding resentment. I'd probably be still placing blame and shame on the other person. I'd probably be dating, trying to reflect, uh, deflect and, and just, you know, kind of get myself out of feeling bad. You know what I mean? Or shit, I, I might even just be um, using my success and just be like, hey, I'm doing good in life. So... I must have been blessed, they must have been the wrong one, and this, that, and the third, right? Like, there's so many different ways that I can trick myself to, uh, to stay in a place, even though it looks like I'm growing, but I'm really not, because I'm not being honest. So, uh, these four things helped me move through it effectively and in a very healthy way. I had to tell myself, Jay, Yane, nothing is happening to you. It's only happening through you. And I know most people say it's happening for you, but I'm, I, when I say through you, I mean like this is here so you can allow it to shape you, to do what it needs to do through you, right? So when you really surrender to this idea or to this, you know, you surrender to the situation. When you surrender to this idea, you surrender to the situation and you allow yourself to have the human experience and it goes through you. You don't wrestle with it. You don't resist it or try and date someone or do something to get rid of it, right? The best thing for you to do is lean into it. But many people look at leaning into it as if they, oh, so you just want me to sit there and just be sad? No, of course not. But you can actually look and see where the pain is coming from. You could separate yourself and you could be independent from what's going on. You could observe the pain of where it's coming from. Observe what's happening. But you don't need to let it own you. When you're sitting in pain, when you're sitting in it, and you're allowing it to own you, you're creating the narratives that make you say, oh, okay, well, this is this is what I'm feeling um, because I'm this. And, and look, they're probably, you know, we create all types of stories on what the person's doing, what we're doing, what's going to happen to us. Why did they do it to us? Why do we feel like this? You know, we, we create all types of stories. This is sitting in it. And in that sense, yeah, I would do everything possible to get the hell out of there. Whether it's going out, whether it's, you know, dating, whether it's drinking, I would do whatever possible. 
But when you actually allow it to go through you, you don't sit and just think and observe the pain only, but you observe it and now you're allowing yourself to say, well, you know what? Okay, I'm accepting this. I see it, right? Because we're all, we're talking about grief. We're talking about the, the steps of grief, all right? So we're allowing ourselves to see the pain and to allowing ourselves to be, uh, being giving ourselves patience and grace to have the human experience, right? Uh, and then we, we, we start to now have a better insight, a better control on what we want to do for ourselves. So instead of me going out to drink or smoke or date, right, and allow these other energies to now get involved in my process, um, instead I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to the beach. I'm going to sit by the water by myself. I'm going, to, I'm going to go for a hike. I'm going to go, you know, I don't know, get a massage. I'm going to do these things that are all self-care, right, but they're not to take my mind away from it or to get rid of what's happening, but it's allowing me to go through what's happening, allow what's happening to go through me. Um, so again, nothing is happening to you. It's only happening through you. And with that being said, uh, you have to remember that this is the second thing I had to remember. All relationships are here for you to learn deeper parts of you. The Bible itself is about, um, it's about relationships. You know, relationships are the most important part of our lives. First being the relationship with yourself. Uh, so in my relationship, when I chose to first allow myself to really lean into the pain and, and the experience and unpack and unlearn and, and discover all these parts of me, I started to see what parts of me attracted the experience I had with my ex, right? Many people lean towards placing blame or shame or choose to ignore what the relationship is supposed to be showing them about themselves, not about the other person. When I speak to people and they have more to say about the other person than they do themselves, then I know there's a possibility, just a possibility that they didn't do a lot of work or acceptance or honest reflection about themselves. You know, um, whatever it was about my ex that hurt me was a reflection of things about me that I needed to heal. So I had a lot of abandonment issues, emotional abandonment issues. Yet my fear of being emotionally abandoned manifested. It attracted someone who does, who that's what they do. They abandon. Conflict comes, they run, right? Um, and this, that they have their own journey of why that is. But I still knew that that was something that I knew I had issues with. And it just so happens the issues that I had before I even met her showed up in her, in our experience. And it led me to really look at what those things are. And then I deal with those things. I go to therapy. I, I do things to really tackle those things. And man, I, I, I'm so thankful that I was able to see that. I was thank, I'm thankful that I was able to spot that. Because the next relationship that I'm in, there's so many things that I've learned, right? That I evolved in to bring to my next relationship. I'm excited about it. I got tools, right? I got healing. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. But again, when you go through a breakup, it's important to know that that breakup, that relationship was there to show you the deeper parts of you. And even if you're with someone in a relationship right now, you don't need a breakup to know that this relationship is still here to show the deeper parts of you. You know what I'm saying? A lot of relationships, even my own, probably could have lasted if both people were completely authentic and were real about how they were they were evolving. You know what I'm saying? Um, but when you, when you have something to say and you don't say it, your silence becomes a lie and it stays with you. Now you both can't evolve because you don't know where each other are on, the, on their journey. You don't know where they are on their journey. They don't know where you are on your journey, right? So... This is important to really do in your relationship so you can know what are the things, not just about them that's evolving, what, but what are the things about you that's coming up based off of being with them? All right, so the first thing was nothing is happening to you. It's only happening through you. The second thing was the relationships that we're in or even the breakups are here for us to learn deeper parts of ourselves. The third thing is, 
find your community. Now, this is important, and we really don't think about this. Now, granted, a lot of our process of the breakup is alone, right? We got to deal with stuff alone. Um, but we also need the right people to lean on. I leaned on some people during my process that I thought were really close friends. And to be honest with you, they made me feel some shame, more shame than anything else. You know, um, sometimes I, I, I mean, even to this day, I really was like shocked, you know, but then there were people that I didn't know as well, you know, that I met that were really cool. that were really great. Uh, but they were really emotionally skilled. They were insightful. They were they were easily e easy to be in vulnerable conversation with, and they just allowed me to be. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, or you get those people that just want to fix you. They just want to fix the situation because they're uncomfortable with your discomfort, right? You don't want to get caught up in that. You 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 want to share what's going on with people who are going to tell you the real, tell you the real about you. Not make you feel good because I got people around me that I shared this with. My, my brother, uh, my, my friend of mine, she's a therapist, but like we're also personal friends. And then my mentor, you know, I have people that I shared my process with that really told me about me as well in the situation. Like I wasn't innocent, you know, like, bro, this is, you know, this is your issue too. And this is what you do too. But then they also were gentle they were loving you know there was no shame there was no blame uh but then there was people who really made me feel shameful you know what i'm saying and almost made it look like i was a burden to even deal with it you know and uh that didn't create any comfortable space for me to go to them and i just and i know also there's people who will keep you in your mindset and like not really give you the real as long as you feel fine right about how you feel about it, that's cool but if i was putting blame and shame on that person Right. And and that's how I'm living my life. And that's how I'm getting through. Trust me, I got friends, specific people who will be like, hey, make sure you don't live in that resentment because you put in a lot of blame, a lot of shame. Like they'll check me on it. And I appreciate them so much. I love them so much for that because I did not. I didn't do it. I, I, I was able to stop right there and check myself. You know, um, I'm a deep processor. So. It doesn't take much for me to see myself and to even reach out if I need to and say, hey, I apologize. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but sometimes there's situations where you can't reach out, you know, and, and, and you just have to do that within yourself. Right. But uh, find your community. Find those people that are going to really, really be with you during this process and take it serious because it's not something to belittle. It's not something to minimize. And a lot of people who are not going through it will do that. There's some people who really can't understand. They can't empathize until they're in it. There's a lot of people like that. So you just got to be careful. You got to be aware of who your community is, right? So again, understand that the situation is not happening to you. It's happening through you, right? And then understand also with that, that relationships are here and breakups are here for us to learn the deeper parts of ourselves, not about the other person or other people, about ourselves, all right? And then third thing, find your community, all right? That's important. Find those people who are really going to give you the real, not just be yes people, right? And not just be people that want to shame you, people that want to make sure that you are really evolving the best way possible from the situation. Um, and then the fourth thing, probably the most, is the most important, therapy. I know we don't, as black people, we don't always look at therapy. As black people, we might have limited access to therapy, but um, there's there are plenty of resources. And also there are also other forms of therapy that maybe you can use as a bridge to get to real therapy, like official mental emotional therapy. But there are other modalities that can be very therapeutic, but I would I would make sure, oh excuse me, I would make sure that you that you flow and, and you really get into each of those. You know what I'm saying? Find out what each of those um, modalities are and, and see what works for you. But therapy is important. And when you can get to therapy. Get to therapy because and, and take your time to find the right therapist because I can promise you what you're dealing with right now, if you're going through it, if you already went through it, if you still feel like you've got some things inside of you, 
That's because it's not just an easy process. It's difficult. It's challenging. Okay? So, again, I hope this really helps. Um, it really helped me. It helped me to understand and surrender to the situation, to know that these relationships, this relationship was something that was exposing and showing me the deeper parts of me, you know, to really know who my community was, who was really for me. Um, and, and when I began therapy, these things helped me get to a place now where, oh man, <laughs> I'm just in a great place, man. And I live by the soul's intention. And I love from the soulful place, you know? So, uh, and I love you from a soulful place. That's real. I, ca I can't even stress how real that is, but uh, I hope this helps. All right, I love you all. Peace.